Okay, so the, the Greek word in the New Testament for kingdom is the word basileia. Go ahead and say that, basileia. And what that means is basileia is anywhere where the rule of God is in action, where God's will is happening. And so the kingdom of God is not limited to geography. Wherever somebody is walking in obedience with God and believing in Jesus, there's the kingdom of God. And of course, the more people you get together who believe that and walk in that, the bigger the footprint of the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is like a viral takeover, and it's been happening since Jesus came in Bethlehem at Christmas time. It has been the slow retakeover of this world, the slow reclaiming of, by God of this world. So when you think about that one thing that you would change, more than likely, whatever that was, would be something that would be kind of in alignment with God's heart. So anybody, just raise your hand quick and share what you shared with somebody. Tell me. Lying. What? Lying. People who quit lying? Okay. Cancer. You'd end cancer. Yep. Peace on earth? World hunger. World hunger. Okay, good. World hunger. Anybody else over here? I'm sorry? Addiction. Addictions. No more addictions. These are all great and worthy things, right? And we know that when that happens in somebody's life, their life gets better, doesn't it? If somebody's struggling with addiction, and they're by, and, and almost always, you guys, almost always people overcome addiction through a relationship with God. It almost always happens that way. If they do that, they become a better person, a happier person, a more joyful person, a more peace-filled person. If somebody's hungry and all of a sudden they have food, that's better, right? All of these things you named make the world better, true? And so it's easy to think about the kingdom of God as just what is it that happens out there, okay? But now I want you to ask yourself a different question, okay? If you could change yourself, think of the one thing you would change about yourself. And I'm going to eliminate one option. Nothing about your physical appearance. I'm talking about your heart. Think about that. Don't turn and tell somebody. I'm not going to make you do that. I'm not going to turn this into a confession time, per se. But I want you to think about that. And here's why I want you to think about that. How many of you know the Lord's Prayer? Good. How many of you know the words of confession that we're supposed to say before communion? Anybody? Do you know it? Okay. If we say we have no sin, we lie to ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sound familiar? You know why I still remember that? That's out of 1 John in the New Testament. But I, I don't remember that because I just decided one day to memorize that verse. I remember that because every Sunday in church before communion, we would say it together. And it just became ingrained in my mind as truthful as that is. And, and I think about how the kingdom starts with admitting, agreeing with God about who I really am and my need for his forgiveness. Amen? That's where it starts. That's where the change starts. Because if you think you're going to fix yourself, you're in for a rude awakening. It won't work. You can't do it. You all remember the Lord's Prayer. What does Jesus say? He tells his disciples this. He says this. He's saying this to his disciples. Thus he says it to us. 
This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And then what does he tell us to pray for? Your kingdom come. Your will be done. That's Basileia, right? Where? On earth, as it already is in heaven. The, at the heart of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus is telling us to pray for heaven to come back to earth for the healing and the hope and the joy and, and the sinlessness and no more sickness, no more death, no more addiction, no more hunger, for that to come back to earth. And when that happens, is that not way bigger than just dying and going to heaven? God doesn't just want to save you and me, as wonderful as that is. His plan is to save everything, all of it. And that's the kingdom of God. Everything good that you see in this world preserved and amplified and everything wrong and corrupted finally shed, not to weigh us down anymore. And so we pray that. We pray for God's kingdom to come but not just out there. First, we pray for it to come in here. In my heart, in your heart. And it starts by acknowledging our need for him, right? But we have a little problem with that. The truth is, as much as we want to believe in God, and we want to believe what He says about how to live and believe what the Bible has to say about how to live, we question it, don't we? Just think for a second and be honest with yourself. Is there one part of the Bible where it says to obey God that you're just kind of like mm, pushing back against a little bit? God says, but... It made me think of um, an old Saturday Night Live commercial. You know how Saturday Night Live likes to do parodies of commercials? And they did this parody of the, of the Amazon Echo. How many of you have one of those in your house, like the, the Siri or the Echo and you talk to it? You got that? Yeah, we don't have that in our house because we're smart. But um, <laughs> anyway, I thought this was kind of cute and kind of clever. There's one little bad word in there, but I think we can get past that. Let's go ahead and watch this. It's kind of cute. I think we're like that. We ask God, God, what about my life? How do you want me to live my life? And he tells us through the word, through scripture, through prayer. And then we're kind of like, oh, I don't know about that. Huh? Man, I've done that. Anybody else want to join me in that confession? Yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Those are five really dangerous words, you guys. Because the Father in heaven, he wants you to have the best life possible. And we don't have that when we think maybe we know better. <laughs> and I've learned that from personal experience now that I'm an old person. It's really true. It's really true. Proverbs chapter 3 says this, trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. How much of your heart? Not part of it. Not part time. All your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Now here's the interesting part. Read it with me. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Notice something interesting about that part in yellow. It's the opposite of how we pray to God sometimes. We say to God, God, I, I want to know your will for my life, God. Tell me what you want. Show me the way. Show me where, what path to take. But we don't want to, we don't want to obey him in the little things. When it comes to those, we kind of look at him and say, well, I don't know about that. Whenever somebody comes into my office and they pose that question, Pastor, Pastor, I'm just trying to figure out God's will for my life. The first question I ask them is, how are you doing with the Ten Commandments? 
And almost inevitably, they're like, well, I do pretty good. But then what happens? We uncover a, I don't know about that, somewhere in there. What is he saying here? In all your ways, submit to him. And then what? Then he will make your paths straight. In other words, trust God with your little things. And he'll take care of your big things. Do the little things. Follow him in the little things. Daily little obediences. And learn to trust him with everything in your life. Your relationships, your hopes, your dreams, your fear, your money. You name it. Your gifts, your, your talents, all of it. Give it all to God. Trust all of it to him. And he'll direct your paths. And you'll find who you really are. You'll find joy. I want to share with you one of the most dangerous prayers you will ever pray. Are you ready for this? Because there are some, there are some prayers, you guys, I want you to know, all of, all, of, all of you here, that are really, really dangerous. Because if you pray them, God is going to answer them. But it may take you on an unexpected path. When I lived in Nashville, Tennessee, I lived there for a year after I graduated with my first degree in college, trying to make it in the music business. Not as a singer, there's a reason they don't let me do that here, but as a music writer and things like that. And um, it didn't go well. It was, it, was, it was rough. I was quite literally the starving artist. And I'm going to tell you right now, there is nothing romantic about that. It is no fun not knowing where your next meal is coming from. And I know that feeling. And I remember just having a prayer session with God. It was kind of a half prayer, half yelling, me yelling at God session. <laughs> and that's okay. And I realized that I needed to give everything over to God. In all your ways, submit to Him, including my dreams. And so I prayed the following prayer. And I, I put it up there in a way that perhaps you can pray it too. God, if I never play or write another note of music again in my life, but what I do pleases you, let it be so. Fill in the blank. Write that down on your sheet, on your card. What might that thing be that you need to give to God? I prayed that prayer with fear and trepidation and honesty. And I did not become a famous music writer and producer. And I think you know what I did become. And I can't imagine doing anything else. And you know what? On top of that, I still get to play music and it's pretty awesome. God knew me better than I knew me. That's a dangerous prayer, but it's a great prayer. Now, before we do this, we have to remember that we so often want God to tell us what to do with our lives, but we have to remember that God is first and more concerned with who you are, your character. Who you are comes before where you're going to go. And that's why you pray that prayer, because you're, you're telling God, shape my character, and then show me where you want me to be. Now, the last thing I want you to write on there, one other thing, and you do not have to put your name on this, because we're going to have you do something with it. I want you to go back to that second question. What would be the one thing you would change about you, about your heart, if you could? And write that one thing down. It's probably a flaw, a weakness, a sin you're struggling with, whatever it is. Write it down. And then take your card and fold it in half. Or even tighter if you want. And as we close in worship tonight, adults and kids, when you feel comfortable, I want you to walk over to that cross. And uh, I'll have uh, Josh or Isaac, that bottom panel pops open. They're going to open that, and I want you to place your card in there. 
Don't put your name on it. I'll collect them tomorrow. And I will read them. And I will pray for you. And then we will use those to become the ashes for Ash Wednesday. When we observe that. Let's pray. Father, we confess to you that um, we can be stubborn and we can have a lot of moments where we say to you, I don't know about that. And how little do we realize that when we do that, we actually take a step away from your will and we take a step away from your kingdom. We take a step away from the person you created us to be. We take a step away from the joy that you want to give us and the fulfillment you want to give us. We actually take a step away from the path that you desire us to walk. And so help us to realize that the first step in experiencing the kingdom of God when we pray for it to come here is to let it come first in our hearts and then through us to the world around us. Infect us with that good infection. May your kingdom come. Let's close together by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Whose is the kingdom? God's kingdom. Amen. Let's close in worship. And again, as you feel ready, go on back there and place your card in, in the cross. And if you're sitting under there, girls, you may want to move so that people can get by you and do that. Let's stand and let's give God our worship now.